Boker Tov, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. RT reporting this morning that the year of kicking Russia in the AWS, according to Senator Lindsey Graham, the Republican of South Carolina. Uh, he's still very bold in his speech there. As, we, as you know, we reported about uh, him and John McCain going to Ukraine and their rhetoric from there saying that 2017 would be the year of offense against Russia. I guess Lindsey Graham just doesn't want to admit the fact that the U.S. had a lot to do under the Barack Obama administration of, of causing the coup that happened inside of Ukraine. It wasn't Russia. It wasn't Russia being the one that was invading Ukraine or annexing Crimea. The Crimean people have tried to get their own autonomy from Ukraine since 1991. Uh, three years running there, 92, 93, and 94, they were voting for their independence overwhelmingly every Every time at least 90% or higher. It was only in 2014 when the Ukrainian government turned against its own people and when finally this is when things changed. There was a coup that took place, a Maidan coup that is, that overthrew Yanukovych who was the acting president at this time. And then a puppet president was put in, Petro Poroshenko, who has been backed by the Obama administration and of course major backers by George Soros, John McCain and even Lindsey Graham. This is why we see so much rhetoric coming out. Also Lindsey Graham says uh, that there still needs to be uh, dealt with as far as Russia regarding the election. He states here, if you're worried that we're, that we're not going to look long and hard at what Russia did in our election because Trump won and the Republicans are in charge, you don't need to worry about that, the South Carolina lawmaker told delegates from around the world. I promise everybody in this room that Congress is going to take a long, hard look at what Russia did to undermine our elections so they'll be better prepared when they come your way. That's kind of funny. The FBI just cleared Donald Trump of any ties or his staff with any ties to any of Russian intelligence officers and of course so much false information still coming out uh, by senators over there especially Lindsey Graham and that of John McCain. In fact John McCain took it a step further uh, in his latest uh, comments there about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is attacking media is how dictators start. That's what John McCain st st stated just here recently. The ex-Republican presidential candidate says a free press is vital, adding the first thing dictators do is shut it down. This is being reported on Sky News uh, in very interesting comments here. The article reads here, John McCain was warned suppressing the free press is how dictators get started following Donald Trump's attacks on the media. The U.S. president has continued his verbal assault on fake news journalists saying in a tweet that they are the enemy of the American people. And he told a cheering crowd at a rally in Florida that he wanted to speak to you without the filter of the fake news. Mr. Trump added they've become a big part of the problem. They are part of the corrupt system. Uh, but Senior, uh, Senator McCain, a former Republican presidential candidate, said a free press was vital and we must have it. Well, I agree with Senator McCain when it comes to the free press is vital and that we must have it. But the fact still does remain that the Western propaganda machine, the mainstream media, has had a lot of freedom and freedom so much that they are suppressing and trying to stop that of the independent journalists. There's where the free press is really important. And now, following in behind the footsteps of Hillary Clinton, calling other, uh, all other news fake news that doesn't agree with the mainstream propaganda machine put out by CNN and the likes of others, uh, like many other news organizations like-minded as they are. Uh, so I can't blame Donald Trump when he says the fake news media is, not, is the enemy of the American people. He has a lot of truth in that because this is why wars have been uh, spreading more and more throughout the Middle East is because the propaganda machine coming out from all these different news sources uh, putting out an agenda that is not true. And of course CNN does lead the way in that. Um, we know there's many others out there, the Washington Post, the New York Times. Many of these news organizations are very much pandering to um, the fake, fake news scenario for whatever whatever military agenda that the United States wants to carry out. 
Moving on in other news, uh, speaking about the, the situations that are going on in the wars that keep happening, and of course the threat of war uh, already happened. Lorenzo posted this on his Twitter account. U.S. has deployed a thousand troops to uh, Orzeus, or I can't even pronounce the name, Poland, about 137 kilometers or 85 miles from Kaliningrad, uh, Russia, in late March. This is very concerning. Uh, because we keep seeing more and more troops being built up along Kaliningrad, Kaliningrad's uh, border there, a, a Russian province that's embedded right here in the middle of the European Union. Now the reason why this is such a major issue is because it seems more and more that Kaliningrad has become the Cuban Missile Crisis of the United States many years ago, back in the 60s that John F. Kennedy faced. Now Europe has its own Cuban Missile Crisis and that is because Russia moved nuclear uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles to Kaliningrad and we do see a constant buildup of troops on that border there which only makes you wonder if regardless whether or not it's with Russia mainland whether or not Europe may end up trying to tackle Kaliningrad as a separate issue altogether. Not sure about that, but it definitely does not look good. What do we have going on? Uh, Mikel puts out on his Twitter page here, this is an ongoing problem in Paris, France here. As you can see, the police are really hemmed up, being pushed back. The riots have continued to, uh, to grow and swell inside Paris, France all weekend long. Uh, it has been a week though, an entire week of violence being pushed at, pushed back, boards tossed at them, bottles, everything else you can think of, uh, but the people constantly provoking the police there. I'm just wondering when the time will come that they're going to say enough is enough and end up declaring martial law in France. And it's not just uh, Paris either. This has spread throughout uh, uh, Paris, oh, excuse me, France. 20 more areas across France are also undergoing the same problems as, as what they're facing in Paris, uh, which is, as according to the um, uh, Express here, the UK Express, the ongoing trouble in Paris, which has led to riots in some parts of the capital, is spreading across France and uh, as uh, vigilantes staging running battles with police and protests. Uh, of the rape of a young black man. This is what started this all and it is moving across uh, France very rapidly, but not just France. We also have other issues in Germany. The migrant crisis continues to, to, to just grow and become more and more of a problem. Uh, not that we say that we're against the fact refugees needing a place to go after all the wars that have destroyed their homes in the Middle East, but Merkel is now saying again, Europe must take more migrants. Islam is not the cause of terrorism. Uh, in a statement here published by Breitbart News there, Angela Merkel claims that the European Union still has responsibility to take more so-called refugees and pleaded to the Islamic governments to help convince people that terrorism has nothing to do with Islam. All right, now keep this in mind because we're going to look at a couple of other issues that are going on and you want to think about this, these comments. In fact, before I go to the German uh, rioting that began, or the, the, the protests that began in Germany, let me first just share with you what they're talking about when they say that Islam has nothing to do uh, with the unrest that's happening in Europe. I want you to listen to a little bit of this here. This is an imam and this was happening in the UK over the weekend here. Uh, they are calling for Sharia law to be uh, made mandatory throughout the UK. There were many, many protesters there, Islamic protesters. Listen to what they say here. They're calling on mandatory Sharia law inside the UK. And the UK is only just one place that this is being demanded by, the, uh, by Islam. Uh, they're demanding it across Europe completely. 
And all the, all the refugees that have been brought in is only contributing more to this issue. It is a growing issue, and it is something that is spiraling completely out of control, uh, especially in Western Europe. But now they're beginning to bring in more and more refugees into Eastern Europe as well. And it's only a matter of time before Eastern Europe ends up like Western Europe, where the crime rates will increase dramatically. And of course, the cry for Sharia law growing greater and greater. According to this article right here that was on the uh, Gatestone of Europe, Germany mob of 100 Africans threatened police. This happened on um, uh, happened this weekend. It said that up to 100 black Africans threatened and insulted three police officers in Hamburg's notorious St. George district this week, according to the newspaper Die Welt. Uh, Die Welt. There were tumultuous scenes after the police uh, had arrested a young man from Somalia. The man had refused to leave a betting agency from which uh, he had been barred. Instead, he aggressively threatened the staff even before the arrival of the police. The 18-year-old threatened the two employees with cutting their throats and emphasized uh, emphas emphasize, uh, with this gesture, said police spokesman uh, Olaf Wundrak. Subsequently, a mob of 100 Africans then showed up and turned against the police. It was only after backup arrived that the situation was brought under control. The officers were faced with, so, uh, with calls to piss off. Others yelled, here, here it is not America. This slogan was heard and seen in Hamburg for the first time two weeks ago when the scores of Africans protested against alleged racist police violence carrying a banner which read in English, here is not America, stop shooting us, black lives matter. And of course, I would say that any life matters, black or white, Hispanic or Asian, all lives do matter. But the case of the continuing unrest is certainly becoming more and more rapid and becoming more and more of a problem. Uh, ending our, our, our broadcast this morning, though, on a good note here, I wanted to share with you here, we had actually um, received uh, a CD in the mail a, a, a few weeks back from, from this particular group called Tune West. And uh, it is also, they, they do sing old country as well as bluegrass, but they do a lot of gospel music as well. And it was definitely a blessing. Uh, I can't pronounce the name of their website at all, so what we will do is we'll, we'll include a link uh, in the description below of their website, but uh, it was very delightful. I have always loved bluegrass to begin with, so uh, very delightful to get one, and, and I believe this group here is, uh, uh, they're not in Germany, but I believe they're in Switzerland, if I'm not mistaken, but the, the website is in German. Uh, you can click on it. It gives you an option to translate it to English, and you can read a little bit about uh, this group here. And I don't, I don't know how you can actually order their CD, but if you're able to get it, I'm sure it'd be a blessing to you. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Online.